The Cavalcade of America, starring William Holden and Brenda Marshall. Sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. In tonight's DuPont play, The Firefly Lamp, we present two outstanding Hollywood stars, William Holden and Brenda Marshall. Miss Marshall will appear as Otelia Butler, and here to open our DuPont play is William Holden as Wilma Holmes. I'd like to tell you what happens when a down-to-earth construction engineer, that's me, gets himself tied up with a swamp, a ghost, and a pretty girl. The swamp? Well, that's the Great Dismal. The ghost? Well, it's supposed to haunt the Great Dismal. And as for the girl, well, that would be Otelia Butler. Never prettier than that afternoon in April 1853 when I sat with her on the porch of her Richmond home. But all from the Indian hunter's camp, this lover and maid so true, are seen at the hour of midnight, Jam, to cross the lake by a firefly lamp and paddle their white canoe. Oh, isn't it a beautiful poem, Will? Oh, it's all right for a poem. It's called The Lake of the Dismal Swamp. Thomas Moore wrote it. And just who is Thomas Moore? A very famous Irish poet. An Irishman? Writing that kind of melancholy hocus-pocus? I don't believe it. Oh, sometimes you make me so mad. I'm an engineer. The world for me, Miss Butler, is measured in three dimensions. And I don't go chasing after ghost-carrying firefly lamps, like that fellow in the poem. When I've got to get from one place to another, I find me a road. And if there's no road to be found, I build me one. Ah, and someday, Will Mahone, you'll find the world isn't always like that. That there's some things you can't build roads over and bridges across. Strange things. More wonderful and mysterious than people dare think about. Don't believe it. Well, it's true. What do you know about the Great Dismal Swamp? It's right at our door ticket. No one dares to go near it. And those that do, what happens to them? How many times have you heard of people disappearing into it and never being seen again? A swamp is a swamp. Nothing but a piece of lowland badly in need of drainage. And what's so mysterious about the Great Dismal anyway? About a hundred years ago, George Washington had it surveyed from corner to corner. He even started to build a canal through it. Oh, well... Now, listen to me, Miss Otelia. Do you intend for me to spend my visit discussing our mutual affection or this blasted dismal swamp? Mutual affection? You're taking very much for granted. I am not. You are, sir. I say I am not. And I say that you are? Yeah, yeah. What is all this? <laughs> Hello, Father. Dr. Butler, how are you, sir? At the moment, Mr. Mahone, a trifle annoyed. I was in my study, hoping to find a few moments of quiet for my mid-afternoon nap. May I ask you, sir, to court Otelia with a little less noise? I don't mind losing my daughter, but I do mind losing my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Otelia, will you excuse us, please? I want to talk with William. Of course, sir. I'll see you later, darling. But without that book of poems, remember. Oh, of course, darling. Anything you say... I wonder if she means it. My mature opinion is that she doesn't. Just sit down, my boy. Oh, thank you, sir. William, the time has arrived for me to uh, act out the part of the serious parent. Yeah, a role I find the trifle musty and very annoying. But it can't be helped. Now, you and Otelia have been engaged now for over 16 months. That's a long time. Uh, yes, it is. All right. When the devil are you going to get married? Oh, very soon. Very soon, sir. I hope... Uh... So you know the situation. My position now as the chief engineer of the Fredericksburg and Valley Plank Road is high in title and mighty low in salary. And besides, I see no future in building plank roads. It isn't wooden roads this country needs, but iron rails. Not wagons and ox carts, but steam locomotives. That's the future for us. I'll agree to that. And I can't take the responsibility of a family on until, until I can afford to maintain a family with some degree of comfort and security. <laughs> A very unique point of view in these times, I must say. It won't be too long. You have some further prospects? That's one of the reasons I'm here in Richmond now, sir. It's two years since the General Assembly incorporated the Norfolk and Petersburg Railroad Company. 
Nothing's been done so far. But I understand that construction is due to start fairly soon. So I've heard. Chief engineer on the job will be a mighty fine thing. $2,500 a year. Oh? Yes, sir. And there's a meeting of the board of directors at Dr. Mallory's house this afternoon. I've asked for an appointment. I'm going in for that job, and I'm coming out with it. All right, Mr. Mahone, come in, please. Thank you. Sorry I had to wait so long. Oh, that's all right, Dr. Mallory. Mr. Camp, Mr. Leonard, members of our board of directors. Rare pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. How do you, sir? Now then, suppose we get down to business. Mr. Mahone, I understand you're familiar with the country between Norfolk and Petersburg. Yes, sir. Like a muskrat knows his creek. Do you have any ideas as to the best route our railroad should follow? Yes, I do. Well, let's hear them. Yes, sir. Well, uh, may I use this map of Virginia you have here on the wall? By all means. And borrow this ruler for a moment. You go right ahead. Now, between Norfolk and Petersburg, there's only one town the railroad has to hit. And that's Suffolk right here. Mm-hmm. 20 miles southwest of Norfolk and 56 miles southeast of Petersburg. Actually, what we have is two sides of a triangle. Petersburg at one end, Suffolk at the angle, and Norfolk at the other end on the bay. Now, here's your route as I built it. One end of the ruler on Petersburg and the other on Suffolk. That's it. You go on a straight line between Petersburg and Suffolk. That's right, Mr. Camp, a straight line. Still the shortest distance between two points. Yes, but what about the route from Suffolk to Norfolk? Here it is. Another straight line. Another one, that's right. But that's impossible, of course. Why, Mr. Camp, do you say it's impossible? Well, that route would take you right through the Great Dismal Swamp. That's right, sir. But you can't do that. You've got to swing around it. What do you figure your construction costs at, Dr. Mallory? Uh, roughly $11,000 a mile. Swinging around the Great Dismal will add at least five miles to your route. $55,000. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. I'll save it for you, every cent of it. It's impossible. There's no solid ground to work on. A railroad can't run on swamp mud. Where would you get the workers to go into the swamp? Why, the place is infested with snakes and wild animals and, and other things i rather not talk about. Ghosts? You can't laugh at something that people have been believing in for years, Mr. Mahone. Look, Mr. Camp, gentlemen, I'm not afraid of the great dismal swamp or anything in it. I'll get together a crew of workers that'll be so tough they'll outscare any ghost within 50 miles of it. Not around the great dismal, but through it. Smack dab through its dirty brown heart. That's the way I'd build. Mm-hmm. Uh, one moment, Mr. Mahone. Gentlemen, I'd like to... Mr. Mahone, Mr. Camp and Mr. Leonard agree with me. We'd like you to accept the post of chief engineer for the Norfolk and Petersburg Railroad. You mean, and I build the way I want to build? The way you want to build. Through the Great Dismal? As you said, Mr. Mahone, smack dab through its dirty brown heart. Ortelia. Ortelia! Well? I've got it, darling. I got the job. Oh, how? When? Come out on the porch. I've got to tell you all about it. Everything. Dad's asleep upstairs. Chief engineer. $2,500 a year. It's all set. Oh, it's wonderful. How did you do it? With a ruler and a straight line. A line that runs smack through the great dismal swamp. Oh. We'll get married right away. I'm taking the surveying gang through the swamp next month. And you come along with me, too. It'll be a wonderful honeymoon. A honeymoon? In the Great Dismal? But why not? I don't know. It's just that I... What's going on down there? Oh, Father, Will got the job. He's been made chief engineer of the railroad. Good. Glad to hear it. And I'm going to marry your daughter. Fine. When? As soon as possible. Uh, with your permission, sir. Well, if you want my permission, the two of you best be moving off the porch. If I don't get some rest, I'll be walking down the aisle of the church in my sleep.
Here it is, Atelia. The great dismal. Oh, I'm still afraid of it, Will. Afraid of it? What's there to be afraid of? I don't know. The silence of it out here in the canoe. The way the shadows hang between the trees. And the dead stillness of the water. Ah, it's just a swamp. And it won't be so silent very long, and I'll prove it. My construction gangs coming west from Norfolk and east from Suffolk will be cutting and sawing their way through in a couple of weeks now. And we'll wake it up. Listen. That sounds like Bill Sutley, my construction boss. Hello! Hello! He's around the bend in back of us, I think. I'll turn the canoe around. Hello, this way. Mr. Mahone. Oh, there he is. Certainly, here we are. Mr. Mahone. Something wrong? Mr. Mahone, there's yellow fever in North. What? Hung up like a raised fire. Hope dying off past and they'd be buried. Everybody's pulling up stakes and high-tailing it off. The survey and gangs moved out. Lock, stock, and barrel. And they're camped outside Norfolk. No. Yellow fever. Bill... You take Mrs. Mahone back to Suffolk. Yes. You going on to Norfolk? Of course I'm going to Norfolk. Where do you think I'd be going? Timbuktu? All right, now, men. Who's doing the talking for you? Ben Thomas? We're quitting, Mr. Mahone. We ain't going into Norfolk. You signed with me to do a job. That we did. But nothing we signed says we've got to go near Yellow Jack. Now, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Wait till it blows over. A couple of days and we can get down to work again. Yellow Jack doesn't dry out in a couple of days, Mr. Mahone. You know that for yourself. It'll be months. And we're not squatting around waiting for it to pay us a visit. No, sir. No, sir not us. Let's go, man. All right. Get out there and run away. Keep running until you run your legs off. And when you come back to Norfolk, it'll be by steam, on rails. And I hope you can afford to buy a ticket. You are listening to The Cavalcade of America, starring William Holden as Will Mahone and Brenda Marshall as Otelia Butler. Sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Continue our DuPont play. A young Virginia engineer, William Mahone, has evolved a daring plan to build a railroad from Petersburg to Norfolk, right through the heart of the Great Dismal Swamp. In the late summer of 1855, an epidemic of yellow fever has suddenly swept down on the city of Norfolk, forcing Mahone to suspend construction. It's a few days later now, and he's meeting with the board of directors of the proposed Norfolk and Petersburg Railroad in their Richmond office. Just how bad is the plague in Norfolk, Mahone? It's very bad, Dr. Mallory. You can't even describe it. The streets are empty, and the only sound you hear is the wagon that goes around collecting the dead. Well, I tell them. You'll never get a construction crew together that'll go near the town now. That you can be sure of. Sure enough, Mr. Camp. Gentlemen, I have a suggestion. Yes, sir? I suppose that we end our line at Suffolk. Forget about going into Norfolk. And the line at Suffolk? Well, you can't be serious, sir. It's got to get into Norfolk. It's got to reach the sea. But you said yourself, sir, that Norfolk is a dead city. It may never come back. Oh, don't you ever believe that. Norfolk will come back. It's got a future. One look at the map, he'll tell you that. But, Mr. Mahone, we've got to take a practical view of our problem. Practical view by all means. All right. Here's a practical view. Norfolk is one of the best harbors on the coast. It's the nearest and best point for the flow of trade between the ports of Europe and the Valley of Mississippi. Patrick Henry said that, and Jefferson agreed with him. Norfolk is Virginia's door to the world. You can't slam it shut. What other choice do we have? Keep building. If we can't get our construction gangs into the city now, then let's get started going through the swamp. That'll take months. And by the time we reach Norfolk, the fever will have run its course. It's a great gamble, bringing a railroad into a dying city. It's worth the gamble. I agree. Start building through the swamp, Mahone. Start at once. Why, 
tiger down. Jim, you better not run out any further. Mr. Mahone coming in on the construction train? He is. Does uh, he know about it yet? No, oh, not yet. He ain't gonna like hearing it. I ain't gonna like telling it. There he is, waving from the engine tender. He's got the missus with him. Hi there, Sutter. Hello, Mr. Mahone. I brought the missus with me. Give me a hand here. I'm proud we are to have you with us, Miss Mahone. Watch your foot now getting down. It's kind of muddy here about. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sutter. Oh, please don't worry about me. I'll be getting back to Suffolk by nightfall. Mr. Mahone insisted that I come down and see how well you were going. Oh, he did, eh? Maybe as hell we better help you right back on that train. What are you talking about? We ain't going well. Huh? We not only ain't going well, we ain't going nowhere. What's wrong now? Well, it seems we hit ourselves a little mud patch. Not just your plain house broken kind of mud, but the ooziest, slimiest mud ever put out by the imps of Satan. You know that field we had in the section we finished it before you left? Yes, what about it? Nothing, except it ain't. Sucked right down into the mud, the whole blasted him back. I don't believe you. You don't say. Why, you just walk right along there a couple of hundred yards and see for yourself. Mr. Mahone, you ain't never going to get a train to run on rails through this here slop. Not unless you find some way to float iron on mud. Well, that's all. I've seen enough. Stay here, Tia. No use trying to go further. All right. Just let me sit down. Very careful, Mom. Let me root around that there tree stump first. Snake's got a funny way of picking up stumps. Next in. Yeah. I'll reckon this one's vacant. I hope so. Three weeks' work. Three solid weeks' work. And look at it. More water than fill. Called a halt in this section yesterday. Nothing else to do. Suddenly. Yes, sir. You go on back to the camp, start packing up, pay off the men. Oh, can't you try another way, William? There must be another I way. I was given a job to do it to you. A job that I said I could do. Cut through the great dismal. Well, it looks like I bit off more than I could chew. Go on back, Sutton. Yes, sir. Mighty sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, too. Yeah, don't tarry too long here about, Mr. Malone. Light comes down like tall timber out here. That's fast. Believe me, a snake can lose his way once daylight's gone. We'll be back. As soon as Mrs. Mahone has had a chance to catch her breath. Yes, sir. Well, there'll be many a laugh in Richmond when this gets out. All the wise ones were saying that I was too young for the job. Too young and cocky. They said the swamp would get me. And they're right. Oh, it's not your fault, dear. Well, whose fault is it, then? The job's a failure, isn't it? And what gets me, what's eating me to the bone, is the fact it wasn't the wildness of the swamp that stopped us. The snakes, the bugs, even the ghosts didn't stop us. It was the mud. The great Mahone stuck in the mud. Well, let's go back. All right. Oh, let me hold you by your hand. It's awfully slippery here. Yes, it is. I'll, I'll find you a tree limb or something you can walk with. Oh, there. There's one in the water. Oh, be careful. I'll fish it out. Ah, here we are. Oh, that'll be fine. Wait a minute. Look at this, Atelier. Why, it's some kind of an instrument. Well, sure it is. An old-fashioned surveyor staff. And really an old one, too. Hey, there's something carved on the compass. Can you make it out? Let's see. It's a date. 1763. 1763. Well, that must have been lost from George Washington's surveying party. That might have been belonged to Washington himself. <sighs> it's funny, though. What's funny? You know, it's probably been lying in that water for almost a hundred years. Yeah, that's right. You'd think it would have rotted away, but the wood looks perfectly good. As good as new. Well, sure it is. When wood is entirely immersed, water acts as a preservative. Oh, it does? I didn't know that. Well, shall we go back? Shall we? William? Huh? What's the matter with you? What are you staring at? This staff, Atelier. It's given me an idea. About what? Water acts as a preservative. It preserves. Well, what are you talking about? About a railroad and a swamp and following a firefly lamp. Come on, Akia, let's get back. Sutley says we can't get trains to run on rails through this slop. Not unless we float iron on mud. All right, that's just what we're going to do. Float iron on mud. (laughs) 
Let me ask you something, Bill. What's the only kind of roadway you can build through a swamp? The only kind that'll hold up. Plank road, corduroy, you know that. Right. And that's just what we do. We dig a right-of-way, 100 foot wide, clean across the swamp. We put down a corduroy, a plank road of cypress logs. And then on top of the logs, we build our embankment. Ditches along the side will carry water above the level of the planks, keeping them always in water, underwater. A road on top of a road. That's it. It's a wild idea. It is, but a good one. Now, get your lumberjacks to work. We're going right through the Great Dismal Swamp this time, right through to Norfolk. Memorandum to the Board of Directors. Progress of the roadbed through the Great Dismal Swamp is proceeding on schedule. The rails are already laid in the section between Jericho Creek and the land company's canal. My dear Ophelia, I wish I could give you a report of what's going on here. It's a tremendous undertaking. Our men work waist deep in water most of the time, but look out face every few feet to fight off the poisonous snake. Oh. So far, we have found no ghost. <laughs> but there isn't a man on the job who wouldn't prefer a dozen ghosts to one live wriggling coffee. I'm greatly pleased to inform you and other members of the board that our line is complete. We expect to run our first train into Norfolk on September the 1st. I have, I have taken the liberty of asking my wife to come along. This will be a great occasion for Norfolk, for Virginia, for all the country. And the city's alive. Look at it, Ophelia. People cheering all along the way. And nobody believed it could be done. Iron rails cutting through the great dismal swamp. But you did it, Will. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Proud of me? A man like me, crude, unpolished, with no love for such fine things as poetry? Oh. I'm surprised at you, Ophelia Butler. Well, the name isn't Ophelia Butler. It's Ophelia Mahone, wife of William Mahone. And you'd best be very nice to me. And if not... Then I'll run away. To the lake of the Dismal Swamp? That's right. I'll come after you. How? Paddling a white canoe? Not me. I'll be riding on the 448 out of Norfolk. Oh, how unromantic. <laughs> Maybe, but a lot more reliable. We're coming into the station. Oh, Will, look at the crowd. A dying city, they said. Not Norfolk. Suddenly, tie down that whistle. We're here. That was the beginning. Today, on the main line of the Norfolk and Western Railway, 56 million tons of coal are carried in a single year. Tons of freight and thousands of passengers. They ride the line laid down through the dismal swamp almost a hundred years ago. A line that today recalls the vision and the resourcefulness of Will Mahone, who in the spirit and tradition of freedom, freedom of enterprise and of opportunity, built Virginia's gateway to the West. Thanks to William Holden and Brenda Marshall and to our cavalcade players for tonight's DuPont story, The Firefly Lamp. Next week, the DuPont cavalcade will present the popular Hollywood star, Lee Bowman. Our play tells of a young man who walked 1,600 miles 
but who refused to walk out on a dream. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Firefly Lamp, was written by Irv Tunick. William Holden may soon be seen co-starring with Gloria Swanson in the Paramount picture, Sunset Boulevard. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zala. Ladies and gentlemen, during this national YWCA week, we join the nation in saluting this great organization of three million American women and girls, an integral part of our rural and urban communities and our churches and our schools. The YWCA brings a distinguished contribution to our country's welfare with its high ideals of character and patriotism. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the stage of the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Lady Snooks, Harris's Danny, next on NBC.